Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 311. Build muscle and improve your health. The benefits associated with resistance exercise. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin does a lot of things at her office. They provide a lot of services, and primarily their focus is on hormone replacement, the, the appropriate assessment and determination about whether or not you need hormone replacement, and if so, which ones and in what amounts. But to complement the hormone replacement decisions, they also have uh, programs that they recommend and they work with you while you complete them on diet and exercise, because nothing is a panacea. Not, not one single thing ever fixes everything. Mm-hmm. So you need uh, complementary inclusions. You need to do things as, as part of a considered, uh, consistent program to improve the quality of life that you have as you age. So we start with the issue of hormone replacement because that that seems to be the domino that opens the aging cascade, especially replacement of testosterone. But even if you are getting your testosterone replaced, to get maximum benefit and be as healthy as you can be and and stretch the the quality of life that you have or that you want to have as you age, you have to watch your diet and you have to watch your exercise. So today we're going to be taking some excerpts from a fitness magazine, a training magazine, uh, to talk to you about resistance exercise and aging, not just uh, the, the kind of exercise that you get where you build your heart rate up and you, you walk or you run. Uh, you need to do something with and for your muscles as well. And there are a lot of reasons for that, which is what we want to share with you. Because I, I certainly did not know anything about it. And in my conversations with others, no one's ever mentioned any of these things as benefits of resistance exercise. No one ever thinks about muscle mass, really, when they're talking about aging. Although we see it every day. When we see somebody from a distance and they're really they're really withered and they're leaning over and they're having trouble walking. Yeah. That really isn't osteoporosis. It's really loss of muscle. That's because muscles hold you up. Well, you see, and it, you see with old people, like old men in particular, I notice it because I'm, I'm starting to compare myself. Oh, there's one of my better or worse. <laughs> uh, how am I doing? And, and they get sort of concave shoulders mm-hmm. and they get wizened or shrunk up and they bend over. They look mm-hmm. like they're leaning against the wind. Mm-hmm. But you, you literally see them shrinking as they age and as they lose weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if they haven't lost weight, you see them just rounding out and softening mm-hmm. you know, and true. their ability to, to walk. And be uh, balanced. To, to be balanced. Has to do with to, muscles. Yes. And they, they stagger or they have canes or they have walkers or, or what have you. So, and those may be the result of physical conditions that they've developed. Mm-hmm. But at the core, if you have a good, solid, muscular foundation, then you don't develop those. You don't, you don't get those concave shoulders you, where, where you narrow and shrink up in mm-hmm. here. And we're not talking about bodybuilder bodies, you know, with buns of steel and abs of steel and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Although we're, some people do do that, but that's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing unless you're medicating yourself to get there. But because that's just over muscled, we're talking about good, healthy, strong muscles. And you can run marathons all day long and you're not going to necessarily get upper body strength. And you're not going to get a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. So when we give testosterone, we normally are reversing the loss of muscle that comes with aging. So usually we don't replace it before 40 and 40 in women and 50 in men Mm -hmm. is usually when you start losing muscle with losing testosterone. If you look at muscle mass and you look at testosterone, it's a parallel drop Mm -hmm. and it just continues to drop until you're at zero testosterone and and your muscles are gone. So why is this important? Now, you and I have had had several conversations about going to see a trainer, 
going regularly, two mm-hmm. to three times a week. Yeah, if you and, don't have any experience <clears throat> working out and you don't mm-hmm. know what you're doing with resistance machines, I mean, you can go to a gym that has Nautilus machines, uh, but typically if, if you go like to a public gym, yeah, there are a lot of people there and you don't get the the sequencing. You may not know how to use the machine and get hurt. Or know how to use the machine. And so that's always an issue. So I, I suggest... If you can, and even YMCA's have trainers at mm-hmm. a reasonable rate, is at least start out by by hiring advice. a trainer yeah. and getting some advice on wh- what's your goal. Do you want more muscle mass? Do you want to not not um, age like you see people age? Do you want to have more muscle mass because it burns calories? Do you want to have more muscle mass because you've lost your balance, or do you just want to look good? Yeah. And they'll do, they will help you get to where you want to go. That's why it's a personal trainer. And, but muscle mass is key to anti-aging and to get muscles. You can't really get muscles. You can't grow muscles without testosterone. Testosterone's it. I mean, that's the basis. You have to have the ingredient and then you shape and mold the ingredient. And then you use exercise to then use that in the best manner. So, so one of these things, so I talk to people about their muscle mass Mm -hmm. and in some cases I'll use you as an example. We were talking about a medical, medical issues Yeah. and said, Hmm, this is, I mean, I'm not as good as I was two years ago. Right. And, and I said, well, you need a trainer. You need somebody to teach you how to use weights because you do lots of aerobic exercise every day, but you need some weights so that you can use your testosterone help in a really good manner and build muscle, which will then take away that medical issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it really does work. We were doing projects around the house and I found I couldn't lift the same volume of Mm -hmm. of mass that I used to could lift Mm -hmm. uh, for as much or as long. Uh, I was getting exhausted, uh, earlier than I expected to. I was, I was getting angry. I, you know, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but I find myself getting really mad when I can't make my body do what it always used to do. And, and, and that's psychologically a problem for it, all of it us. It is. It is. And it's like, damn, what am I going to do now? You know, mm-hmm. I, and so you, you push harder and you can hurt yourself and you have mm-hmm. to be careful. And, and there's a simple solution. Get some training, get some help, do some resistance exercise in addition to aerobic exercise. Mm-hmm. And at least get the the best that you can out of your own body. Actually, the Health and Fitness Journal, which is where we mm-hmm. we're taking this information, says that age-related <clears throat> muscle loss is associated with bone loss, metabolic rate reduction, fat gain, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, which is prediabetes, heart disease, and various problems associated with physical degeneration and dysfunction. I mean, that, that's the whole spectrum. That's aging. It is aging. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a... Exactly the same things that we call aging when it is lack of muscle or losing muscle mass. Yes. So it, I always have people go, well, I don't want to do that. I don't need to be a, I don't need to have the perfect body or I don't want to, you know, that's an excuse. Right. Or they've never done it before and they don't know how good it can be for you and how good you can feel. Or before testosterone, they did it and they said, I never got anywhere. My muscles didn't grow. I didn't get, I just was more tired after I worked out. That's a sign you need testosterone. When you're more tired when you work out afterwards, then, I mean, after after workout, I feel great. One, because it's over. (laughs) Because I'm not, I'm not naturally a, an athlete. I mean, that's just not who I am. I've just made myself be an athlete since my daughter was two. So that's 29 years of working out at the same gym with trainers and making sure that I could sculpt my body. And that's, they always say that's kind of a bad word, sculpting. Mm-hmm. But you can, you can say, I want, I want to get rid of fat on my rib cage. So they figure out exercises for you to do that's going to narrow your waist and, and narrow the, or get rid of the fat in that area. Yeah. So you can ask them to do that. You can do that with pointed exercise. Yeah, you so can. you can, you can look better, but that's not really what we're talking well, about. One of the things I found with a trainer is you can't cheat. Right. I mean, I'm trying to do some of the exercises that he's asking me to do and, and I start, quit. I start cheating on them. You know, <laughs> I'm not standing up straight or I'm, I'm pushing them from my abdomen instead of my upper arms or <laughs> whatever it is. And he stops me every time and he says, no, you don't have the right position. You need to shape this. You need to hold this here. You need to go there. And it's like, doggone it. You know, I was just trying to get the count. 
just the number. You told me 15, here's 15 repetitions. And he's like, no, <laughs> and that's count. not the same. They count for not doing them right. And I said, where's we? In this? <laughs> <laughs> well, he does it. You, we have the same trainer as yeah. well. And, and honestly, yeah, he's, he's a good. great example. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great example. But one of the things, there's so many shocking facts. When it, you lose five pounds yeah. of muscle mass for every decade after 50. I mean, if you don't, if you, if don't, you don't exercise resistance. and you don't, I mean, if you don't exercise with weights and you don't take testosterone, right? Because without testosterone, you're not going to stop that loss completely. Right. And, and you know what it does? If you're not able or willing to go to a gym and get a trainer, you still need to do something. I mean, carry two soup cans when you go for a walk, swing them in your arms, get some mm -hmm. of those two or five pound weights when you go for a walk, try to do uh, push-ups against a flight of stairs. I mean, there are, use mm -hmm. your own body for resistance, but, mm -hmm. but you need a, a consistent, intentional, dedicated program. And, and it has to be 20 minutes or more. I mean, we do an hour, but 20 minutes or more at a time to really get your muscles going and burning. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about that mm -hmm. is that if you do re resistance training, you increase the amount of calories you burn mm -hmm. per, um, Per hour, excuse me, or and the total calories you burn over 72 hours after you work out. Yeah. That's amazing. So so one hour lasts 72 hours of, of increasing your burning of calories, so that's weight loss. And we don't really think of that when we're lifting weights, we think, and, and when we have our little bands on, it says, well, you've you know worked out for an hour, that's it really isn't. It really lasts longer than that, which I love. Yeah. It's very efficient. Well, this article talks about women too. And it says that women <clears throat> who do not engage in resistance exercise may experience a one to 3% a year reduction in BMD, which is bone mineral density. Mm -hmm. So leading towards osteoporosis. Right. Uh, if you do resistance exercise, you can improve <clears throat> the bone density by 1% over a 12 month period. So just mm -hmm. by doing the resistance exercise, uh, again, hormone replacement also helps with that. It's faster. Yeah. Right? yeah. Hormone replacement plus resistance training brings you back to normal faster, exactly. a lot faster than that. Right. So even if you'd stopped losing my, uh, bone, excuse me, if you stop losing bone, which is normal one to 2% per year, if you stopped and kept the same bone density mm -hmm. that you have at 50, that would be an improvement so that you don't right. have to take any of these silly drugs that we give for osteoporosis. Testosterone really is a they better bone grower. That we don't want to have. Yeah. And testosterone has very few. So right. that is the best bone grower, estrogen and testosterone for women. So, so your muscles burn five to six uh, calories a day individually. Each muscle mm -hmm. burns five to six calories a day if you don't do resistance training. If mm -hmm. you do resistance training, then your muscles double the calorie consumption that they burn for protein synthesis in your system. So, so they, they break down the <clears throat> energy of the food that you eat and put it into the muscles as burnable fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, they double their production mm -hmm. if you That's use amazing. resistance training. It, it is amazing. I always tell people that they'll know when their testosterone and their muscle mass has gotten to a point where it's healthy, both the testosterone level and then the resulting muscle mass with resistance training and testosterone together, how they'll know that it's where it should be for burning calories is when they wake up in the morning and they're warm. That means your muscles have burned calories all night and made heat. Hmm. I don't talk. I don't mean a hot flash. I mean yeah, you're that's warm. Right? You're not freezing cold. Your hands, when you touch right. your partner, your hands aren't freezing because you've been burning calories and warming yourself up all night, and that means weight loss, mm -hmm. which is awesome. So they've gotten to where they should be for, for just being on a, a steady state after that, mm -hmm. then they're going to be able to eat more if they're at their ideal weight, enjoy food more because they can eat what they want. They also this is a huge show deal. increase in lean weight as opposed mm -hmm. and a decrease in fat weight, uh, which is the thing that we need to point out. You, if you exercise and you do resistance training, you may not lose weight. You will gain muscle, and muscle is heavier. So initially, when you're doing all these things and you're saying and you're watching your diet and you're getting testosterone, you know you're like, well, Dad, Gummin, I'm not losing any weight. And what you're doing is strengthening your body and shifting your weight 
and you will lose weight over time mm -hmm. if, if you follow the program that you need to follow. But as far as an immediate result, what may happen is your fat turns into, into muscle. Right. So usually it's a, you gain a, if you gain a pound and a half mm -hmm. of, um, let's see. No, if you gain a pound of muscle, you lose a pound and a half of fat. So it's just a trade off, but you lose a little more fat than you, than you gain in muscle. So at first I tell people just to measure their abdomen where you can get fooled is that even though you're doing this, sometimes your thyroid will, will fall off the cliff, you know? And so if your waistline isn't getting smaller yeah. while you're doing resistance training and taking testosterone, we need to do some blood work and look for something else. Right. Because you should be getting tighter and your muscles should be getting harder and stronger. And unless you're, unless, oh, I exercise three times a week. Well, except when I have meetings and except when my kids have a, I have, to, I have to go to school for my kids and then, but so you can schedule three times a week, but if you don't go three times a week, yes. that's a huge problem. Just because it's on your calendar. Yeah. I mean, you're doing doesn't it. mean you did it or you yeah. join the gym doesn't mean you go. So it's very important to follow through. But the, um, one of the things I want to tell so many people who have type two diabetes is that exercise is one of the keys to achieving ideal blood sugar. When we had, when I took care of pregnant people, which I don't do anymore, we found that instead of giving them a drug for their type two diabetes that went along with pregnancy, we put them on a treadmill 20, 20 minutes every day. And that brought their blood sugar down. They didn't gain as much fat right. and their babies were healthier. So we can do that when we're not pregnant. We can do that and still get a great outcome. Blood sugar comes down, less insulin resistance. It really is kind of what we were built for. Was We were built to exercise. Well, and the article says that if you're not doing any kind of resistance exercise or slash training, which we recommend the training, but <clears throat> for the goal of being able to do the exercise. If you're not doing that, then you lose those five pounds of muscle uh, every 10 years, every, every, every 10 years. But that increases the chance that you'll get diabetes. The, mm -hmm. the United States is in the midst of an epidemic of type two diabetes in people 50 and over. The mm -hmm. statistics are estimating that one in three adults will have That's type two horrible. diabetes after the age of 50. One of the ways to avoid being that one in three mm -hmm. is to do resistance training and maintain your muscle mass. Uh, don't let it turn into fat. Don't let it cause your insulin to readjust itself to burn fat and, and <clears throat> not work. It's so if you look at the five things that resistance training does. Okay. So it is that it helps you burn fat. So you get leaner, mm -hmm. may not get lighter at first, but leaner. You also, uh, it helps you get your waistline back. Both men and women need that. Men need it in front. Women kind of need it on the side, basically. Mm -hmm. Then it also helps you feel energized. You can feel energized after working out. Even if it's not aerobic, you can still get that kind of runner's high mm -hmm. after working out for over a day. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a real benefit for most of us, mood lifting. Then um, they say they put in here and feel happier, which I think is kind of the same thing. They were yeah. looking for five. Right. But um, and better heart health. Right. Because if you don't have diabetes or if you control type two diabetes and bring your insulin levels down and your blood sugar down, then you have fewer heart attacks and fewer strokes and fewer aneurysms. So all of those things that go along with vascular disease decrease if you're just working out in this manner. Now, I think you should also work out with aerobic exercise. Right, right. Yeah, you should do, do both. You should do both. And some of us do more of that than others. So, I mean, I have friends that, that run, but they usually spend a couple of days in the gym with, with, um, with weights and a trainer because they know how important it is to their running to Actually, keep ran, their stamina up. I ran into one of your friends at mm -hmm. the gym the other day mm -hmm. who is a runner. Mm -hmm. She runs all the time. And, and she looks amazing. You make jokes about how much she runs. And she was, <laughs> she was at a weight machine lift, you know, pulling resistance. And I stopped and said, I thought you were a runner. And she says, they get me in here at least twice a week to do this. So mm -hmm. that I can run. Right. You know, so. So if you think all there is is aerobic exercise and that it's silly to lift weights, we're not telling you to lift like huge weights where you're going to crush your vertebra. We're talking about moderate 
moderate weights. I mean, I don't think I ever use anything over eight pounds with my upper body because I make a lot of muscle. Right. In fact, when they tested me for, they have a resistance um, machine where you hold your hands here and it, it does, I don't know exactly how it works. I'm not an engineer, but, but it tells you how much fat you have and how much muscle you have. Right. And when they printed it out, it said that I needed to lose 10 pounds of muscle. Because I had so much muscle mass. Because you were one of the strongest mass. boys in the gym. Yeah, no, but I'm not. I'm not any stronger than most women. But I have a lot of muscle it, how mass. How you make it? Yeah. Right, and so that was impressive. That I thought, even though it was kind of a criticism, you need to lose muscle. It was a joke. Well, but that's funny because <clears> when I first met you, you were talking about when you were delivering babies, you have to stand on a little box because you're short and you get up mm -hmm. to reach, and you're doing C-sections and stuff, and you have to reach inside and lift all mm -hmm. that out. And so you developed upper body strength to be able to do it. And you I needed to lift, do. then I lifted weights so I could. Yes. Because in those days we used forceps and we used a little suction cup that you had to be really strong for to pull baby through the birth canal too. Yeah. And I women don't have as good an upper body strength as men. So men would just pull on the forceps like this, baby come out. I'd be kneel kneel down and I'd have to pull toward my chest to get the the right amount of uh, traction to get the baby out, yeah. which was fine because I could never hurt a baby. Right. I was never strong enough Too that strong. I could right. hurt a, a baby, but I needed that strength. And that's why I lifted weights. I had much bigger arms then than I do now because I lifted some bigger weights then. I mm -hmm. needed to. But this is simply for health. So, I mean, if I can do it, and I don't really like exercising, but I do it because it's good for me. Who wants to take vitamins? Nobody, but I do it because it's good for me. There are certain things you have to sacrifice a few hours a week. Yeah. And you have to do it because it's going to keep you healthier. I am not ending up in a nursing home, and none of my patients are either. We are not allowing ourselves to lose our muscles so that we can't walk. Well, and to, some, some, to close it out, one last reminder. <clears throat> if you do exercise, aerobic or resistance, you can't then turn around and say, because I exercised for 20 minutes or 40 minutes today, <laughs> I can have a piece of pie for dinner or I can have M&Ms, you know, for my midnight snack along with my glass of wine. You, <laughs> you can't say, OK, now I can have that uh, big gulp uh, soda. It doesn't. It, it, that, it doesn't work that way. I mean, it's, it's not like, OK, I, I burned all that off so I can eat this. Right. Uh, it's, that it's type not an of excuse. rationalization on a daily basis is going to get you killed. Yeah. Uh, on, on an occasional basis, we all do that, and, and we all should do that. We're not against having a good time or enjoying something that you like to eat. We're talking about patterns and rhythms over time, building a, a, a habit into your system for things that will make you healthy and keep you active and alive as long as possible. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.